Hello everyone. Welcome to Live at 5 uh, on a Sunday. But no time like the present. See if the clock starts. There you go. Clock starts. <laughs> this technology. But anyway, yeah, it's a Sunday and boy oh boy, I can I was Saturday yesterday. And off to get one thing sent off to another place and there you go uh, boom 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 I mean, people are just elated it's like this odd sense of calm around this really interesting feeling and then you know somebody says to me wow Biden won and somebody else says yes I'm so happy Biden won and then somebody else says, well I'm just listening to the news Biden won and so I got the, I got the gist that what was happening so yeah welcome to live at five in this case sunday and uh just something uh, something new before we get into all those b words but that's what happens to me i just come up with some has something to do with the letter of the alphabet and all these words come in and, and this time it's a letter b but i wanted to show you something interesting so i got i get some apple cider and it's packaged but I think you could do it in an, uh, a sealed container, something like that. I left it out for a few days. A few days, and it goes, uh, how can I get it? Uh, ferment it, naturally ferment it. And that's it. It's just apple cider, and that's all it is. But it's very, my daughter said it was kind of moldy tasting, but no, it's just typical fermenting. But that's what you can do where fruit and fruit juices and certain things. It's as simple as that, leaving the apple cider out. So that's something new, something we haven't thought about. And fermented, according to the markets, is on its way up as far as markets and increased in dollars, as they say. So get into the fermentation business if you'd like. But good for gut health if we think of fermenting. It just helps to break down the food further. Not that you want to get into alcohol, but when you can break down the food, make it easier to digest. Not that we absolutely need it, but in these days, uh, people are speaking, you know, indigestion. That's not enough stomach acid. And that's clear. It's not enough stomach acid. People think they have too much stomach acid, but that's because the food is just sitting there. And they really don't have what it takes to... Uh, to process digest food from enzymes, uh, hydrochloric acid, uh, things like that. So let's get into the news. One of the things I did appreciate yesterday as I was just speaking about is the fact that mainstream news, mainstream news announced that Biden had won. But I don't almost want to shake the calm, but, uh, calm, the peace, the relief that's going on that's making this feel <laughs> the space around whatever the planet North America uh, for those who are voting uh, for Biden or uh, you know as Canadians you're not not voting but just you know just they're on side for the reason they are the interesting thing is I've been asking people so did you vote for Biden because you hate Trump or did you vote for Biden because you really believe he's going to be a leader? And you know what they said 100% of the time? We did it because we hated Trump. We had not voted in years, but we got out there to vote for Biden because they hate Trump. So, something to look into. Hi, Angel. So when we're, when we're thinking about this whole scenario here, and I'm looking at the various pieces, and I decided yesterday to actually watch the Biden and uh, Harris, both of them uh, do their uh, speech as if it's if it's it, as if it's in stone that they actually is official, which is not because as Julian Giuliano and uh, Giuliani and others and many others will say, you can't go past the legal. The legal is the mainstream news doesn't confirm and put the rubber stamp on who wins until due process and proper uh, vetting and all of that is officially done but it's interesting so what do I have here bets bets I've got a bet with my daughter that 
this whole thing is going to turn around in Trump's favor and he's going to win. So by January 20th, depending on where it is, uh, we we bet, you know, so, <laughs> so let's have a little fun here, uh, bet. So Biden, I mean, there you go. I mean, watching him speak and, and sure words are words, but you can't get over just the standpoint of how they've just pushed forward with what they're doing. It just doesn't make sense. And I'm not just talking about half of a Canadian here. I'm talking just common sense and logic says you just can't have people, you know, moving forward like they're doing when there's just so much going on, you know, with the voting. Uh, and just with that, I'm going to go in. I got a little, uh, I have a video up here, so it has some few things. So here's some of the things that are coming out in multiple streams. Not mainstream media for some reason. It's uh, a bit crazy there. But there is um, stop counting. Now, why would they stop counting? Then I see personal videos where they're standing in front and they're not being let in. And even Democrats are saying, not quite sure what is happening here, but this is just not the way it's supposed to be done. As in, and not allowing, because apparently, uh, I'm just learning more and more like you are, but apparently, you know, you do have people from both sides, hopefully a neutral side as well, that would actually oversee the counting observers. And these observers were not being allowed to be right next to and I know that's in here but let's just say here so yeah so after you know there's a stop point I mean it's there's a stop point you know there's a start point and there's a stop point when it comes to voting however that's done and in this case it seems like things didn't stop there were natural disasters and things were stopped and uh, I, I don't know what's going on but it seems like there's more hate from the one side than there is from the other side and uh, Wisconsin suddenly discovers over 112,000 Biden ballots between 3.30 a.m. and 4.30 a.m. Wisconsin magically now has more votes than registered, registered, registered voters. Like how does that work? Nevada has decided that they won't have all vote counts in until Thursday I remember in 2016, it happened in overnight. It happened within within a day. Uh, it wasn't like this. Michigan has gained 138,330. Like, how do they know these exact numbers? It must come from Sam but for Biden since they stopped counting last night. And a whooping zero for Trump. So how does that work? Especially if these are mail-in ballots. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. So let's just agree... It just doesn't make sense. And things are in the process to be making more sense. So there's a lot of information to pour over. And I'm, you know, just voting that the right people are actually in that process. You know, so as they say, what you really want at any point is you want fair and you want the truth to come out. So birds, why did I have birds in there? That's a good question. That's a good question. I put birds. I don't know. I'll have to come back to that one. It's, that's a funny one. So best ever. And the idea with best ever is just to think about the times and how moving forward can always be the best ever. You know, there was, um, now David Wolf and Sasha they did uh, an interview and there's many other interviews and I've been watching a variety of uh, but you know just best ever day the best ever the best ever experience the best ever journey the best ever to come whatever it is is the best ever and it's really perception of things and how we would look at anything and I think this is opportunity to really come in at what's going on here Yes, you know, some people are up on their history and and talking to people who are very much on their history up on their history will say 
voter fraud is nothing new. And in fact, I think they caught Johnson and, uh, you know, he was... And so I don't know exactly all the details, but at the end of the day, it's not new. And really, if we think about human nature, when people want something so bad, you can see it with little children. The whole thing about loss and, and losing a card game never, never meant the presidency. But just losing a card game, they want to cheat. You know, these are young children, you know, I'm just a kind of observant. You know, just play the game, it's for fun. But they hate losing. And I recognize that in children, you know, playing games. I don't care the way. I know that it could go any which way for whatever, the roll of the dice, you know, the people who are playing, whatever. But that's, I'm not going to say it's our nature. It's not our true nature by any means. But it's something that people just, they just don't like to lose. What's wrong with losing? You know, you lose to, wow, somebody was on their game that day had the best this or the best that, whatever it was, but best ever that way. So blame. Here's the thing about blame. Blame, it's easy to blame. It's easy to blame. And as this kind of shakes out, I just want everybody to understand that it's easy to point fingers. We want to blame. We want to blame. We want to blame the other side. And it doesn't matter which side you're on here. It's just the blaming game. Well, if so-and-so didn't do this and do, 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 and all because of, you know, the craziness that's going on. So you have a lot of, probably a lot of Trump fans out there um, watching this unfold, whereas the other ones are on the other side, we can say sides here. They're probably just celebrating. It's closed book. They're not looking. And in fact, they just keep continue to hear things from the mainstream media. So there's really nothing for them to look at as in uh, fair or truths or both sides are look. They, they probably don't. But as I said, yesterday was a huge shift in energy. Just a p I didn't know what it was until... A few people have said, oh, news just announced, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, that's interesting. And then I asked some questions. They had no idea where I sit with any of this. Did it even matter to them? No. What's my opinion matter? I'm not mainstream media. They must know, right? They must know. So the blaming part, again, this is the coming together for people. The people who are uh, not aware or the people, whatever, they could be a relative of Biden's and heaven forbid they vote against a relative. Like it's just that simple. So much has to be uh, put out here, but I, I feel that at any rate, continue with the calm, continue with the peace, continue with observing what's kind of unfolding. And then, as I've been saying, you imagine what you want. So I keep imagining blue skies. And that was the interesting thing. That's what came to me this morning. Some, one of my neighbors said, oh my, Cheryl, the, the trees seem brighter, yellow, there's some brighter. And at that moment, I said to you, you know, something's, something's on the tip of my tongue here, but I don't know what it is. I'll, I'll be reminded of later. And it's the blue skies. We haven't had as many chemtrails, at least in my vision, no chemtrails. All these beautiful blue skies. And that would make a difference with the light and the color. So I don't know if you're into photography. A lot of people are. But if you take pictures of things, when there is the light, the color comes out. I mean, there's always adjustments for cameras and things, but it's brilliant it's bright it's almost like as the sun comes out it's too bright for your eyes to see so it's the bright and that's what I meant to say to the neighbor I couldn't <clears throat> I I couldn't I couldn't just come out with it I knew I'll come later that's what it is the blue sky uh the blaming we don't want to go into that's why the color is there so lots of colors so the eye anything so what I saw I'm going to go over to them before I go to Bitcoin because I have tons of that's stepping over on the other anybody when I mean, we can be so beautifully occupied with something else as in this voting and the ballots and all of that uh, there's things coming out 
in our own government, Trudeau, things trying to, to maybe squeak through, slip through, a mandatory flu shot, something like that for the workers. Um, and they've already, you know, don't want to do it. Uh, so what I thought was interesting, and I went, uh, not so, so deep, but is there's another, uh, let's say, organization that was created to do, uh, it's called a CISA, CISA government, and it has to do with um, cyber, cyber security, that's what, I don't want to go off, but cyber security, uh, there's a short video, it's very clear cut, and this has been recently created, so you got, you know, got the CIA, you got FBI, you got all this, but this is something, uh, and it's related to the government, because you can see it's C isa.gov and I'll put the link down below. The other thing that I thought was interesting and sometimes and I was saying this to somebody this morning today that sometimes news comes out they get pushed into whatever page 20 pages and you know some people don't even want to look at it because anything against what they're wanting to achieve or you know just kind of rattles their cage a little bit and so they can't they can't they don't they don't want to kind of see anything but I found this interesting is Jill Biden's ex-husband accuses her of having an affair with Joe Biden before but he had proof he had a vehicle that went into the shop was a fender bender and apparently it's been claimed that Jill did it but the people who worked on it or saw it or whatever said no, it was Joe Biden that did it. So a very short and sweet article by the New York Post. And uh, I've learned a long time ago that you never discount something entirely. You just don't throw it away, throw it under the bus, another beautiful B word. You just go, okay, you know, just park it there and see what kind of comes out over time. Because, hello, Sharon, uh, because I have witnessed things to be true after that's happened. You know, everybody goes, no, 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 but I never forgot. I never forgot the piece of information. It was just a simple piece of information. I'm not even going to mention it because this person has uh, passed or in that nature. So I'm not even going to bother to say it. But the idea is you have this. So we have clearly two pieces of information going on here with all of the voting and the ballots and and all of that and uh, I'm enjoying the peace of what's happened to all those people who are on the edge of their seats going they don't want a Trump they hate a Trump but they don't like Biden either so that's the interesting thing about it they don't even like Biden but they thought they didn't want this guy and I'm thinking you know, they've had probably a group of people had four years of bashing mainstream media bashing against a person who they don't really know. And this was interesting, just the things that they would come up with, well, why do you hate them? And, and it, it was just some certain thing. It was almost like, oh, you know, forget forgiving or forgetting oops or forgetting that it happened 40 years ago and just believing one source. Uh, for some reason, I think at this time, and I'm just going to say this because personal growth comes in at any point where things can rattle your cage and if you get rattled that's an awesome opportunity to kind of see where things are are swirling moving thoughts feelings emotions to so see where go this is for you for you for you for you it has nothing to do with the person in this case Trump over here or a certain event here like a little fender man or somebody hits you and you know, so that whole thing about don't taking, you know, don't take things personally, but uh, switch it all up and just look at it for what it means for you when things get under your skin, when you react to things. And Trump, right from the early on, not knowing too much about politics, yes, heard Trump name, of course, heard the Trump name, but mm, yeah, I didn't have anything for him or against him either way. He looks what he looks like. I'm not going to hold that against him, but. I saw all the bashing, you know, I just saw all the bashing and Hillary's speech that I guess the opposite side will do a speech supposed to be in good, you know, in good light um, uh, to be a, a good loser, I guess. But it was 
far from it. I just happened to be in my car. Now, there's no coincidence. I just happened to get in my car, happened to turn the radio on, happened to be that speech starting, which they've been waiting for however long. And I listened to it with just simple observing. And at the end of it, without talking to anybody, definitely a poor loser, definitely childish and poor losers. From from that point on, just a little bit interested in here and there, I would just watch people speak about things and how they talked about each other and it was wow it was like whoa this is a bunch of kids in the news a bunch of kids they've lost completely how news should be reported it's like a bunch of kids i still remember that let's go on to to bitcoin let's go on to bitcoin um i just want to mention briefly because you know a lot of people uh, are speaking about crypto coin uh cryptocurrency Bitcoin for a number of years, uh, several years or more. And I remember when it first came in, I remember the whole, you know, this is going to be the next best thing and all of that. And you kind of just sat back and observed. And remember, for a number of years, I uh, was uh, in commodities, in trading, uh, could trade with Chicago, pull up, oh, give me 10, you know, Minneapolis. Uh, uh, futures, whatever, 350 or better, you know, that kind of stuff. And it's like, there's no time to say hello. I mean, at certain times of the day, but otherwise it's like, blah, 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 hang up. But here, here's the deal. So now we have something that hits the market. I'm just going to call it the market. Stock market, commodities market, market. And one of the things I often said to people who were speculators, not hedgers, because when I worked for Westons and Law Blahs, we use it for hedging which means you know you're going to need I'm just gonna say around a thousand bushels of wheat you know you're gonna to need to buy a thousand bushels of wheat and you wanna confirm the price today but you don't know who your supplier is you don't know who your supplier is so you confirm with the market I'm gonna buy a thousand whatever Minneapolis wheat and I have it sitting in my account let's say a brokerage account and it sits there and then I decide which supplier I want to use next year and I can either give them the features or do that so that's hedging that's hedging that means you're naturally short if you're buying anyway won't go any further than that but everybody else who gets involved with the commodities market whether it's natural gas whether it's wheat or a currency for an exchange but aren't a bank or aren't a company that needs to buy, you know, I remember what was olive oil, Loblaws, and had to do some hedging to uh, Lira now, it's European uh, Euros, but it's Euros, but back then it was Lira, so they knew they had to purchase something in order to lock in the price to know what they had, and just go and buy a little bit of Lira, whatever it is, dollars that they knew they were going to spend, because they weren't taking possession of the oil until the future. So they didn't need to pay for it, and you get that but so that's proper hedging that's proper hedging don't want to deal with the supplier don't have to pay for it yet you have the position here and it's in an account but everybody else if we call speculators so they're speculating gambling let's just say gambling for what it is and determining well do I think this is going to go up Do I think it's going down of course they're looking at people who are telling them different facts, different, uh, you know, we'll call technicals, you know, how the chart's moving, all of that. They're looking at all of that and buying and selling to make a profit. That's what they're doing it, to make a profit, no different than the stock market. So all of these markets, so I soon kind of, mm, you know, it's a market because people are able to buy and sell because you can't use it in the world at that time it was meant to be another currency maybe a safe place to have currency if you want to get out of a country's currency that you know you got extra money and you want to just have it sitting somewhere else no different than sitting in gold or sitting in silver or sitting in real estate so just just another how would I call it? instrument just another you know something in the market with a name 
and so the cryptocurrency. So then I asked Paul Hellier. I don't know if you know Paul Hellier. Uh, he's 90-some years old. Uh, Sylvain Henry, who I've been speaking to about, about coming together, getting on his newsletter, just being up to speed what the good Canadian groups and people and constitution and lawyers are all doing. But he came on and he spoke. And he spoke for a bit and then we were able to ask questions. So fortunately, I was able to ask a couple questions. But my second one is because part of his new, he's written several books, but part of this new book was on the money, was on the finance. So I said, oh, i got to ask him, what does he think of Bitcoin? And uh, so I, I won't keep you in suspense, but he just said, yeah, it's the it's like devil's, you know, devil's kind of playground. And I want to elaborate on that because that was my sentiments exactly about Bitcoin. Now, this doesn't mean you you want to go in and gamble, go ahead and gamble. Buy and sell, buy and sell. In fact, I did I did five hundred dollars. Just I you know, I set up the account, um, because anybody can, really. Uh, I know with my RSP I had to uh, because I could do advanced things with puts and calls and options. Anyway, that's a longer story. Um, I could go into the bank and set that up and do self-directed. And off the go, but with Bitcoin, uh, there are places where you can actually. So I thought, okay, I'll put a, I'll put in 500 bucks. This was hmm, three months ago, and just sold it recently. So I mean, such a little bit of amount. But uh, and when I sold, I made 30%. Now that's 30% only three months. Right, so typically over a year, people are glad to make six percent. So just kind of give you a perspective. I'm not telling you to get in to do Bitcoin. And there's some people um, that are feeding me information. If that's if that's, and I know enough to ask the questions. But so the idea is Bitcoin uh, again. It's just a gambling, and I think it's all part. Uh, and this is my opinion, all part and parcel of the tech and coming into a place where, uh, I'll call it the new world order, where, or one world, whatever you want to call it, uh, where you have everybody on electronic currency, right? You move towards that no cash, cashless societies, you do all of that. I'm, I'm all for cash absolutely and partly is because I don't trust the other ones to tell you the truth okay so if I had trust in these you know banks and if I had trust in the system and I trust in the Federal Reserve trust in um, then maybe maybe you know it's just why not right why not but that's not how it works so it's interesting you're all gonna have your opinion and you don't want to think about it too much that's okay too don't think about it too much, but I think cash is, is still king, but mostly because we want to keep our options, and that is important to keep our options, all right? Because if enough people are forced and they go to move towards that, and everybody's like, this is getting on, then they'll get rid of the other stuff. They'll get rid of the other stuff, cash, whatever it is. Next thing you know, they'll want to put a chip, and so everything is known about you and where you spend and all of that and crazy stuff. So at the end of the day, we want to. I'm going to avoid that, right? I'm going to going to. So I'm just doing it for a little bit of fun, a little bit of gambling. I don't want Bitcoin or cryptocurrency to make it. And here I'm going to send. I give you another little piece of information that to me is like a puzzle. Uh, when asking about uh, the whole, how did it come to be, right? It's a key question to ask in any situation. Who thought it up? So apparently there was this name. So the story continues. This is a Japanese guy. So this is the first story I heard. And it's kind of very secret. And and initially you had to mine for the Bitcoin. So you had to have the know-how and the computer systems and the energy to spend in order to mine. There's only so much Bitcoin. It's a really, it's almost like a psychological game. The, the fun in the game of mining and getting it for free, but you have to pay for energy, just seems so... Yeah, you're sucking people into a computer game, you know, that kind of thing. And you don't want to leave your, leave your seat because you just want to keep mining to get all that free. And then it turns out that 
that may not be the case. It may not be this Japanese guy. And nobody knows. But supposedly, this one guy who's made multi-millionaires and himself a lot of money knows who it is. Now, to me, that's fishy with a very large F. <laughs> so just, I'm not holding back here. But the idea is, when you think of that whole thing, cryptocurrency, and you don't know where it came from, and it comes how together, and there's only so much, which means there's not enough for everybody, and you can have everybody, their Bob and Uncle, and the billionaires and trillionaires buying into it, and it's supposed to be for the good people to have you know, an option to use something over here within the system, monetary ever have you pay things, and now the government's into it. To me, just my opinion, it seems just bogus or BS. That's what I had on, on the list there, BS. Just seems like BS. But if you're into gambling, there you go. And can you make meals? There you go. People have been making money in the markets for however long. Lucky they be, connected they be, unfortunate they be, crying the blues to the bank there it be. I mean, that, that happens. You know, that happens. And I, I remember talking to the manager, and we're kind of going through this, and, and I'm saying, I, I said to him, I said, I can't believe there's so many. How many people are, are doing this um, self-directed RRSP? And he says, there's a lot, Cheryl. And I'm going, ooh, how, how is that turning out? And he says, Cheryl, if I had to count the number of people that come in here crying to me that they've lost whatever good majority, whatever, of their money. Ugh, he couldn't count it. He just couldn't count it. And that's the issue. We get so hung up on gambling and winning and just like free ride. It's like the sign. Where is it? The sign that says there are no shortcuts to any place worth going. And it may happen. And it may happen that you're, that, uh, you're lucky. You know, but I always say to people, you're going to get in the market, any of the markets, then you have to be willing to lose everything. And if you're okay with willing to lose that $1,000, that 10000 that 100000 then go for it. Some people thrive on it. And they're very good doing their research and very good at picking out. In fact, they're the ones who are managing portfolios for people because they know what to look for. You know, it's the CEO come from another company. You know, so things change up within the company. You've got to know who's running the company, how it's being run, what the lay of the land is for particular services and products. And, uh, you know, there's so many different things that one could look at. You could drive yourself crazy, especially if you had a bigger portfolio. So they have many people coming in and, and doing different pieces of it. But let's go on to the last one, but not least one, the Bible. You know, the Bible. So interesting book. So interesting. I have never read it. Now, I can't say I haven't never read it because being raised Christian and then going to school and Bible school with uh, my friend's parents, we had a bit of the church upstairs so you hear the readings you know they're reading but you're kids so you're listening and then you know there's the prayer the lord's prayer which we used to say in school all the time and here and there you go to funerals or you go to you know certain events like that and they'll quote things from the bible but there's also the hymns that come through and uh, being a child and going through bible school uh, Sunday school they called it uh, we would have the other Bible books so not the Bible but the others of the stories and you know those big pictures and color and all of that kind of stuff I think I had one um, but I recently it was so old and I probably put it in a garage sale or, or put it out or something but interestingly enough uh, with me and my uncle a biblical archaeologist and even the teachers that, you know, in the metaphysical side, the one teacher has read it. And, you know, so for over the years, I think I collected a few and then just asked questions, you know, which one should I read? And it seems, seems like the King James Bible. And, and so then just with my uncle and, you know, there's this doctor who with an 
atheist and then he was into archaeology but biology comes to anyway he a whole series of videos about genesis and rock formation and all of that i've only started it but yeah i'm interested so you may have a little information for me to share you know the information that you can share with me that will give me some insights or whatever uh, i've been told that it's not black and white you can't you have to know certain things certain words certain words that mean this or this is who they refer to or something so it sounds like it's going to be a task but i'm almost finished a uh, course of love and that's several hundred pages and then it's going to wrap up 40 days 40 nights exercises so the idea is to learn what these books are saying uh, again back to we don't need to worship anything we do not need to worship anything i'm not going to worship the bible i won't be coming back on here as a Bible thumper as they, um, you know, term that kind of comes in. I don't even know if it's proper to say that anymore. But the idea is, no, I'm going to study the book. I'm going to be observant of what I feel when I read certain parts or go through it. My cousins also went to church for many, many, many years. And I think has read the Bible, but she was looking to read it again. So I said, hey, I'm looking to read it. And she has all these audios. So... There's going to be a little bit of being able to share there. So this is going to be fun. And then I'll be rereading the Anastasia books. And the Anastasia books, they'll be in a book club. So maybe there's some crossover here. I don't know. But the Anastasia books, if you are interested in a book club, that's a good one to do. I mean, these books are not your usual books by any means. But they're real and you'll see how you resonate so it's interesting to do the book club when everybody gets to speak because this is the kind of information i have never read in any other book to tell you the truth and if you read the testimony they almost sound um well, yeah there is not any other books like these books and so if you're interested in that that will start for january but i'm just starting to mm, get the list going don't want any more than 10 or 12 but it, a great series and when you join the book club I actually have the PDS but I have to tell you they have made these books so reasonable nine books and you know, it's like 150 bucks and that might be US but you can get free shipping and that kind of stuff and then we get a, a group deal anyway there's a distributor here in Toronto but here nor there, there's no issue around getting it. But I know I wouldn't want to have anything other than a soft cover to read. I like to do that anyway. That's how I read. So let's see if there's anything. Where do I get the book club? Uh, yes, Angela, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, once upon a time when I've done it, so I've done a handful of them, and... Uh, I did something on Eventbrite so people could sign up there. It was easy. And maybe there's the odd person that would find it. But no, most of it was through word of mouth and friends. So you just have to uh, private message me. The key thing is just to have people's email addresses and uh, just kind of go from there. But what I want to do is just make sure that you have information. So I sent it out to the people who have been in the book clubs in the past. Here's the information, here's when it's going to take place, this is what's involved, so you know everything, uh, except for what's in the books, but a few testimonies. So I have that email place, so as I get people coming on board with emails, uh, I will send that email. Then you just confirm, and you sign up. It's only $25. I did that, I usually do that, yeah, people serious but I had people believe it or not sign up for book clubs and they would pay their $25 to get the Cheryl list I'll call it the Cheryl list and uh, that's really all they wanted that's what they told me so Cheryl if I pay $25 I'm gonna get the book yeah yeah you're going to but they didn't they wanted the book list and that's fine I it doesn't matter to me you get out of it whatever you get out of it and that is perfectly fine um, no judgment here at all you know i i still get people in the walk club going cheryl i signed up but i didn't show up last week am i going to be penalized and or you know i just showed up cheryl because i didn't know if i'd get to come is that okay and i keep telling everybody it doesn't matter come 
don't come sign up don't come come don't doesn't matter i mean don't we have bigger things to fish to fry but actually we don't have bigger fish to fry we just need to keep going and having fun and joy coming together and uh, just looking for the truths and you can do that by asking questions and you know the gut feeling you know what's the gut feeling maybe the bird feeling there's a little flutter i don't know i still don't know what the bird thing is but anyway it looks like google chrome is not responding you might be still be able to hear me but clock's not on and it might do a big skip so i don't know i'm almost done anyway to tell you the truth i'm done just done but let's just see what happens here so i could always say goodbye and not responding responding so let's just see what happens here so people still on maybe you can't see me clock is not on there we go clock continue so i don't know if for you on your side whether or not things stop they don't stop you can hear me you don't hear me but as like anything we get to learn as we go on so there you go so i'm just going to end it at there that's a lot of b words a lot of b words and as it is there's a lot of words in general but the idea is we just have to stay calm and still do the things the balance is going to be so important here balance means you're going to take care of yourself and take care of those who you need to take care of and and i think that's important so at the end of the day there's always kind of things and i i'll just kind of end it that uh, more than ever there's people coming together not just in canada about around the world about and i'm going to say it as what it is this pandemic seriously people right from the get go it did not make sense at all that was what do you really want to call it spiny senses it did not so i never in what was going on obviously you can't really speak out because you don't have enough information a little time has to go by but it's clear that something else is here and if anybody thinks that this is all normal to what happened to what they're doing just dictating what you can do not showing the science that's you know that's the way we you know we just got to love them anyway that's what i would say just love them anyway they do not know and at times people can't handle the truth as to what's going on so it's best sharing sharing best it's best just to in some cases just lo- just just like them just love them and if you get opportunities to talk a little bit about this and that in a calm voice then you can which is what i did you know sometimes or oh, that today in the walk club you know just mention a couple of things and they you know it's all it's all of that and you can see they're thinking about it which to me that's good thinking thinking is good when people just kind of brush it off and don't think about it then uh i i know there's uh there's no step forward there's no conversation and then i may ask them all the information i get from them their feelings or whatever and they're happy to share so all good anyway i'm going to wish everybody a good night it's sunday night enjoy uh take some you time and yeah yeah make it the best ever sunday night there you go so take care everyone bye for now and let's just see what happens in the meantime yeah nothing to fear as usual nothing to fear take care bye for now we'll see you again soon see you tomorrow monday live at 5 monday so we'll see you then bye for now